Good morning YouTube. About a month ago Jehu Garcia made a video where he mentioned these BAK18650 cells that were available from a seller on eBay and so I thought I'd pick up a couple of boxes of these cells. They're supposedly new cells and 2200 milliamp hours. There's a little close-up of the cells. So I searched around and found this data sheet on the cells. According to this one, here's the 18650C4. Here they're labeled as GB cell as the manufacturer. Specifications here, 2200 milliamp hours, uh, 4.2 down to 3 volts for that range, uh, charging currents, discharging currents, and uh, internal resistance. So they seem to be fairly good cells and I thought what I would do is test some of these and see if they are suitable for my lithium ion power wall battery. So anyway, what I did when I got the boxes in is I pulled four cells out of each box and uh, put them in my Litocala BTC3400 charger and just did a basic capacity test and that's this first column here. Here's the average capacity came out 2177 milliamp hours. That works out to 99% of the rated capacity. So and they ranged over a, about 100 milliamp hours from the low cell to the high cell, which is just under 5% variation. And then I thought I would test them at 4.1 volts per cell, which is what I had been testing all of my used laptop batteries at and see how that compares. So at 4.1 volts I came out with just under 2000 milliamp hour capacity. That number matches pretty well to the chart that's on the Battery University page. I think they say the 4.1 volt capacity is approximately 90 percent of the 4.2 volt capacity. And let's see, then I thought I would also test them at 4 volts per cell. I did that on my iCharger 1010. So at that voltage it comes out to a little over 1700 milliamp hours and a little bit under 80 percent, about 79 percent of the capacity there. And that also checks out with the Battery University page. I think they, they quote about 75% capacity at 4 volts per cell. And a couple things I noticed. One is the variation between the highest and the lowest cell goes down as the voltage goes down. So the cells are getting actually closer to each other at the lower voltage. And then as far as the data here, what I did in red is I color coded the highest 25% of the cells. The lowest 25% are in blue. And uh, you know, there's some interesting things here, like here's a cell that tested out in the high quarter at 4.2 volts, and then it was middle of the road at the other voltages. Here's one that was middle and was then in the low percentage. Here's one that was in the high quarter and then it was in the low quarter. And here's one that was low at, at 4.1 and it was in the high quarter at 4.0. Here's one that was high all the way across. Here's one that was low all the way across. So it's really hard to tell how a cell will react between the different voltage levels. So maybe that explains some of the oddities I'm seeing between my 4.1 volt numbers and applying those to 4.0 volts. So that uh, that might explain part of that. Now one of the things I just wanted to point out, so I have 400 cells, I only tested 16 which gives a statistical margin of error of about 24 percent. So you can't take these numbers as 100 percent accurate. There's a pretty big margin of error and if I wanted to bring this margin of error down to say 5 percent I would have to test basically half the cells. I think the number would be 197 and I didn't want to test half the cells. 
because one of the supposed benefits of using a new cell is you don't have to test every single cell. You can just pretty much use them as is. So over here I just tried to chart some of the capacity by box. So just using uh, the boxes that I, the cells came in definitely looks like my box number three and four were were towards the lower end. Box one and two were a little higher but again with that, that margin of error this might just be a sampling problem so my next step, just to show you what uh, what's coming up here, is I was going to go through these cells. I'm just pulling out a row of 10 cells, and I'm testing the capacity of 10 cells at a time, and then just seeing how those groups of 10 match up in capacity. And so my uh, battery packs need 20 parallel cells or 10 pairs of cells and what I want to do then is take the capacities of the 10 individual cells and pair those up to produce groups or pairs of 10 that are pretty equal in capacity so I'll take a look at these numbers it'll probably take me about a month to go through all the groups of 10 and then I'll try to see what what kind of technique I can come up with for matching the capacities of these but so far it's looking like the groups of 10 are testing out quite uh, similar to each other so maybe you don't have to do a lot of uh, matching here. These uh, new cell packs are going to be somewhat higher capacity if you take uh, 17700 times 2 that's going to be about 35.4 amp hours which will be about 2 amp hours higher than my used packs so what I'll probably do is keep these new cells in separate battery packs than my used cells and what I want to do with these I've got enough cells to build about five 500 watt hour packs and I want to put the new cells alongside my used cells and then compare how they uh, stack up over time. What I probably try to do is maybe once a year pull one or two of the used packs out, test the capacity, pull one or two of the new packs out, test the capacity, and just see how do used cells stack up against new cells and see if the extra cost of buying new cells is worth it both in terms of how uh, how much work it is to build a battery out of new cells versus used cells and then how long do they last. So stay tuned for those. I'll, I'll do an update on this when I get down to the bottom here and I'll, I'll put those uh, update videos over here on the left side. If you have any questions about the testing procedures or the batteries in general post that up in the comment section down below the video and as always thanks for watching.